Uh, good afternoon, I'm Michael Mason, and I was the reporter for Group 2 for the Rankin Cycle Experiment, which we conducted, which we conducted the week before spring break. Here's a basic overview of my presentation. We'll go through the lab objectives, which is what we were conducting in the lab in the first place. Then we'll go through the apparatus and how does it vary from us. How does it vary from our deal? Then we'll go through the equation with, with the data collected and how to produce our results. And we'll talk about some of the calculations and we'll talk about the results and what they mean. We'll follow up with a brief conclusion. All right, here are our lab objectives. The first one is to calculate the mass flow rate of the system. Then the pump arc input to the system. The boiler heat input to the system. The condenser heat removed from the system. The turbine work produced by the system. The turbine efficiency and the cycle efficiency, and we calculate the ideal and actual cycle efficiency. All right, here's the ideal and cycle. I'm just going to briefly describe the process and then go mainly through the results. Um, one of the two was through the isotropic pump. There's four main components, the pump, the boiler, the turbine, and the condenser. One to two, the pump is isotropic in the ideal situation. Uh, two to three, the boiler, it's constant pressure heat addition. And three to four is isotropic again. However, you'll see in my TS diagram later, it really is not. And then four to the one is constant pressure heat projection as it goes back to the liquid phase of charge over. This is our apparatus. You can see it is very, very normal, well, very elaborate compared to the ideal. However, the four main components are still there the pump, the boiler, the turbine, and the condenser. And then we collected pressure during temperature readings throughout the apparatus, and we used these values in our calculations to produce the result. Right, here are the equations I used to calculate each of the objectives. Uh, I'm not going to go through each one because I'll briefly touch on most of them later. But as you can see, uh, there's a lot of objectives for this lab. It took quite a while. Right, here are my results. Um, I did two runs. Both were with a load of eight bulbs. Each bulb was rated at 25 watts or 110 volts. So the load was 8 times 25, which was 200 watts. So for the first run, I calculated a mass flow rate of about 0.02175 kilograms per second, which seems really low, but it kind of is. And then pump work in was 13 watts. The boiler heat in was 51 kilowatts. The rate of condenser heat out was 49 kilowatts. The rate of turbine work out was about 1,729 watts, and then my efficiencies, which was the main, the main part of this lab I found, uh, I thought was about 26%, which I thought was really well for the turbine, and then the actual, I calculated for my results, were 3.6%, and the ideal was almost 13. I thought my efficiencies were, I thought the actual was kind of low, but the other two I thought were pretty close to being the right values. And then I did the same thing using the same formulas for the second run, and you can see they're very comparable. All right, here's my uncertainty analysis. Um, these were given to us in the uh, manual uncertainty of the temperature readings, which is plus or minus 4 degrees. Uncertainty of the pressure readings had the resolution error, and then the plus or 5% of the measured value. Then we had the uncertainty of the mass flow, which is plus or minus 10% of the measured value. So using the equations that I learned in instruments and measurements, I calculated on uncertainty uh, for the turbine was, this was the output, was 1.729 kilowatts, plus or minus, which this is the uncertainty part of the point, uh, 62 watts. And this one, we did the same thing, uh, 68 watts. Um, I did the, one half the resolution, which was on the gauges, squared, square root, uh, squared, plus the plus or minus, Four degrees plus or minus 0.5, and it came out overall its total cycle around 11.87%. That sounded kind of confusing, but I'll touch on it in the appendix if you uh, have any questions. I right, heard my power analysis. Once again, we had a load of 200 watts for both of my runs. So this, these values were read on the voltmeter. Uh, 112 volts or 381 watts is what the generator was outputting. And then the turbine was outputting once again at 0.7 uh, kilowatts. So I kind of two efficiencies here. Um, the electrical turbine efficiency and divided the 200 watt load to the turbine 729 came out around 11.5 percent. 
and then I did the same thing. Uh, I did this thing with an electrical the generator. I did the 200 watts under 381 and came out way over 50%. Here's the ideal TS diagram. Uh, we've been through this many times. One and two groups of that bit. The temperature increase goes through the pump. Two to three temperature increase and uh, entropy increase through the like, uh, boiler. Three to four, it's, as you can see, it's almost nice and dropping. It says ideal, but it still has to, it still looks like it increases a little bit. Four to one, it starts to cycle. Um, this is my TS plot. I've applied the temperature entropy at the same point. These two points aren't really needed because it's just the cooling water entering and exiting the condenser. And my summary, um, brief major points. Uh, we need high quality steam, otherwise the, the components will corrode. And then to improve efficiency, we can have a regenerative cycle. And some of the main causes of my uh, errors were while interpolating and inaccurate readings on the gauges. Pressure gauges don't read, read below zero, and the view window, depending on the angle you look at it, could be different. Questions?